Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. Both Chilliwack MLAs are sworn in ahead of next week's throne speech. Dr. Karen Bondar announces her bid for the school board. An update on the Barry Newfeld court case with the former head of the BCTF. And the Rotary Christmas show is Saturday at 7 o'clock. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. The Provincial Throne Speech is next week, December the 7th, and that's when we get a glimpse at the B.C. budget and how COVID is going to hit the numbers hard. The Horgan government is expected to announce a $1,000 gift to British Columbians who make under $120,000. Meanwhile, Chilliwack MLA Dan Coulter has been appointed as Secretary for Accessibility. Coulter is confined to a wheelchair. The former Chilliwack School Board Chair was rumored to be in the works, possibly for the Education Ministry, but for now, that is simply not happening. Meanwhile, Chilliwack Kent MLA Kelly Padden will sit as a backbencher. Dr. Karen Bondar, who is known as a biologist with a twist, wants to add the title of Chilliwack School Trustee to her resume. She announced that she will be in the mix when the by-election comes up to replace Dan Coulter, and uh, that is expected to be February the 13th. Trans activist Jen Smith had initially said on social media she was going to run as well, but she's been very quiet since that first Facebook posting after Coulter resigned to go into provincial politics. Chill TV spoke with Karen Bondar and her run in politics, her first one. That will be coming up later in the show. Meanwhile, school trustee Heather Moss was to respond to a Chill TV interview from last week with school board chair Willow Reshell. This was about the R word, as well as Barry Newfeld and other comments about COVID-19. However, her schedule would not allow that. The invitation remains for Ms. Moss to join Chill TV for a future interview. The BC Court of Appeal is in the position to rule on a case of fair comment. Is the argument a good enough defense for comments made by former BC Teachers Federation President Glenn Hansman about Chilliwack School Board Trustee Barry Newfeld? Last week, a video conference hearing focused on comments from 2018. Newfeld filed a civil lawsuit against Hansman for comments from the former BCTF president made about the trustee in 2017 in the debate about anti-bullying gender identity material used in schools in BC, otherwise known as SOGI 123. Newfeld is highly critical of SOGI, as well as criticism that has been labeled by anti-LGBTQ and homophobic by a number of people, Hansman included. A B.C. Supreme Court justice tossed out the defamation suit in 2019 following anti-SLAP legislation. That's the strategic lawsuit against public participation, saying it had no reasonable prospect of success and calling Newfeld's submissions skeletal at best. Newfeld is appealing. At the end of the hearing on November the 26th, the justices reserved their decision, which means they will render that decision at a future date, probably in the new year. And as all of this is happening, BC's new education minister, Jennifer Whiteside, has called for Newfeld to resign from the school board. Chilliwack City Council looking at transit fares as well as passes for students and seniors. Council is reviewing recommendations that could leave fares, well, in place as is, or a single fare could rise from a toonie to 225 or even 250. Meanwhile, and still with transit, the BC Bus Drivers Union applauding the move for masks to be put on before and after getting on a bus, as well as wearing a mask at covered bus shelters. However, the union is concerned about driver safety, stating that their members are not trained, nor should they be put in a position to enforce the mask rules. Well, for those of us who love our dogs, it is time to renew the dog license. Failure to do so after January the 1st could lead to a $200 fine. All the details and the price range details for spayed and neutered, or not, are all up on FVRD.ca. It is with great sadness that the Harrison Festival announced that Harrison Festival of the Arts longtime artistic and executive director Phyllis Stenson passed away last week. Her career with the festival goes back to the early 1980s. She was truly one of a kind, and she will be missed in both the arts and the business community. She really was a force to be reckoned with. Finally, 
It is the first ever Rotary Christmas show this Saturday, presented by Mountain View Harley-Davidson, sponsored by the city of Chilliwack. Dozens of music, comedy, and drama acts are being put together in a coming together of the community in a spirit of Christmas, and a number of corporate sponsors are also on board. This was the brainchild of the Rotary Christmas Parade Committee, who were aware that COVID might put a damper on the annual Christmas parade so decided to start early and plan an alternative safe event. Tune into the premiere of the show on chilltv.ca or Chill TV's Facebook account starting at 7 o'clock on Saturday night. The battle cry for organized hockey is just press pause again. As the COVID clampdown continues, the BC Hockey League canceled the remainder of the exhibition season. They have put uh, pushed back the tentative start date for a regular season. It was December the 2nd, now December the 8th. Should the season start be delayed past that, the players then have to choose to go home for the holidays, and then, of course, be required to adhere to travel guidelines, including going into isolation for yet another 14 days prior to joining their team. With the restrictions come word, though, that the lone American team in the BC Hockey League, the Wenatchee Wild, they will suspend play for the season they hope to return next fall. Meanwhile, the Pacific League is in the same dilemma. The expansion Chilliwack Jets have yet to play a meaningful game. And due to the recent provincial health order, all PJHL games have been postponed. The league is working hard with BC Hockey and the provincial health officer to manage through this tough period. Chill TV's News of the Week, and the person who is throwing her hat in the ring for the vacancy of the Chilliwack School Board as a trustee is Dr. Karen Bondar, known as Biologist with a Twist. The first question is the obvious one, why the heck would you want to set the career aside and get into the political fray? So that's a great question, Don. And actually, I, I think about it more in terms of this being a part of, of my career. I I like to embark on projects that have the ultimate goal of increasing science literacy. And um, and I see this opportunity to serve on the school board as as one where I continue, I, I can continue to do this kind of work. Um, I've got a long career in the education space. And uh, and so, yeah, this is this is different from definitely a lot of the adventuring uh, angles that are going on. But also, I tend to be pretty open about, um, you know, what comes my way and things that sort of come out of left field. And as someone, you know, with a great in interest in education, as someone as a scientist who is very interested in science literacy, but then also as a mom, I have four kids in this district and um, I've been part of my pack for as long as I can remember. It's uh, it would be an honor to to serve on school board because I kind of have a lot of different levels of engagement with it already. For those who don't know, uh, Karen has been with uh, Discovery Channel, uh, National Geographic Channel. You're still teaching part time at UFB, are you not? Yeah, that's right. I have yeah. uh, two courses coming up this January, one in yeah. sustainable fashion and another one in environmental science. One of the byproducts of the job, uh, should you be elected, is being a bridge maker. That's something that Dan Coulter, the outgoing mm -hmm. uh, school board chair, now MLA, was very good at. Uh, the, dare I say it, the school board has a reputation of being challenging and somewhat difficult at the best of times. Do you also see yourself as a bit of a bridge maker? I certainly think that my communications skills and uh, my experience in bringing diverse worlds together, it will be helpful in that way. But I also would like to make the strong point that the current board members, especially um, our chair, Willow Rochelle, is doing an incredibly good job at, uh, at keeping the interest of the kids in mind, which is definitely what I'll want to do as well. Uh, and I think together with the other trustees that are also motivated by by that very thing, keeping it about the kids, keeping it about our education system, I think we can move forward. And I do say that with a good level of confidence. Last but not least, how did the kids, your kids react? Hi, mom's gonna run for school board. How do you think about that? What do you think about that? 
Right? I, you really get it straight from the horse's mouth when it comes from your kids. And I was really tickled that my 15 year old boy, who's at a sort of secondary, he, he couldn't wait to go tell his friends that right that was, was happening. I was like, wow, you think I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> So that that was great. The other ones, I think, you know, they they know about it sort of, but it's not really impacting them too 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 much. They know that I'm usually off doing some kind of weird adventures and stuff, so yeah. they know to expect the unexpected. Uh, so we, uh, unless uh, the date is changing, it's still looking like February the thirteenth. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Bondar, we will be having more conversations in the future. Future, and uh, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Don. Real pleasure. And you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Welcome back to another edition of Now Hear This with your host, Andy Rollman. <laughs> Welcome back to your own show. Thank you very much, Maris. It's nice to be back. Well, it's good to see you again. Thank you. So what's been going on since the last time I saw you a month ago? Well, it's uh, certainly, and I'm, I'm sure everybody has experienced a lot of challenges. Um, uh, COVID has, I don't even think, I think there's a lot of COVID fatigue. Am I... I'm tired of it. I know. I think we're all a little uh, spent. And so I'm seeing a lot of that in my in my clinic too, unfortunately. A lot of frayed nerves and um, there's anxiety, there's fear. And so we're trying to do our best to try to minimize that if a client feels comfortable enough to come in. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, your, your client base is probably, um, m m I mean, not entirely but but uh, mirrors a great part to uh, the uh, the covid uh, uh, patients that uh, are more susceptible to yes. uh, uh, very negative outcomes so very much so yeah 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 so and, and and keep in mind a lot of them because they are um, you know sedentary they're they're in their uh, their homes they're in their condos and and spending a lot of the time uh, watching the TV. So what do they see? They see news and the news isn't isn't all that. Well, and let's positive. just say I mean they they're doing what they're being told to do and what what they what is appropriate. So they're they're maintaining yep. social distancing. They're they're staying at home, not going out unless they absolutely have to. Right. So these are the things that uh, are going to uh, tamp down uh the numbers of the numbers have been hor horrific uh, of late uh, but but not due to that uh uh, group so right but right. anyway yeah yeah you know it's 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 difficult and and um, I just what springs to mind is uh, one of my clients who have always had some challenges with just in terms of fitting the hearing aids and getting the hearing aids to work properly for her um, just had some real challenges and it's just been increasing quite a bit lately with her and I just thought man what's going on you know I'm I'm doing my best to try to get a good fit for her and everything and it's just mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just striking out you know and through a series of circumstances, I find out from her that um, early in 2020, she lost her husband. Oh, she lost her daughter. Oh, my God. And uh, yeah. And then uh, and then COVID, um, you know, so brutal. often, um, you know, it's more it's more than just uh, I can't hear properly or my hearing aids aren't working properly. It, it's sometimes a lot more than that. And you just. You feel for them, you know? You feel for what they're going through. You can't help but empathize with them being in an isolated state, having lost loved ones, and then um, just having to go through things alone. It's yeah. really difficult. Well, in your practice now, um, like, are, are, have you have you tried, are, are you doing Zoom calls? Because I know that a lot mm. of businesses have kind of adapted really well to that. Is that something that you're able to do? Yeah. Is that practical? That's a, that's a great question, and it, um, um, several of our ma ma hearing aid manufacturers have um, fast-tracked uh, a, a system called uh, remote care. And this is just wonderful. Many of our, our seniors um, are smartphone savvy. It's becoming more and more common. So they're smartphone savvy. Uh -huh. By way of their smartphone, I, sitting in my clinic, can remotely connect to their hearing aids using their smartphone to make any adjustments that they require. Wow, that's amazing. That's an amazing leap forward. This is something that without COVID was set to roll out in the next couple of years, but because of COVID, it's got fast-tracked. So we're pretty excited about that. Well, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. So uh, any anything else uh, new that you want to talk about? One thing that just uh, is really something that I've noticed, um, particularly in the last five years, and I'm sure a lot of my colleagues and uh, 
uh, clinicians from other clinics will attest to this, the pretty major uptick in um, sudden hearing loss. And we usually see it one ear only. It's something that happens kind of overnight. Uh, all of a sudden a person says, I can't hear out of my one ear. What, what, what could be the cause of it's, that? What, how, it's how would that happen? so difficult to pinpoint, but mostly what it is is something viral. Oh, wow. And yeah, they go to the GPs and many of the GPs don't even know this. They just say, oh, you know, I'll give you some eardrops and away you go. Right. Uh, but what it's, uh, if, if someone gets this and if you know someone who is just suffering this, mm -hmm. get to the ER immediately. To the ER. Mm -hmm. If you get to the emergency as quickly as possible and, and be administered with uh, doses of prednisone, that can be reversed, but it needs to take place in about 72 hours. So you so, don't have a lot of time. So it could be permanent if you don't deal permanent. with it right away. I've oh seen gosh. it permanent. And I've also seen someone that came in who 24 hours previous had um, suffered this. And uh, having known this, I told her to go to the ER. This was a Chilliwack ER. Uh -huh. uh, she went there and it was reversed. Oh, wow. It was reversed with the doses of prednisone. That, that so, is good information. Yeah. Uh, so it's something you really want to know. Good. Well, Andy, I just want to thank you so much. Uh, I feel like I really learned something important to today. Great. And we're going to see uh, each other again next month, the December, yeah. our, our holiday episode with right. Andy. And uh, look forward to what we'll be talking about at that time. It's going to be great. Thanks so much. Well, thanks so much. And thanks to everyone uh, joining us tonight for Now Hear This with Andy Roman. Thank Until you, everyone. Time. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Chill TV weather, fairly mild temperatures, a lot of sun, a chance of showers on the high near 10. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.